Hey, welcome back to another edition of our online discipleship. I'm so glad you chose to join us and go deeper in your walk with the Lord. Over the last two weeks, we've been talking about money, a kind of heavy subject. But before we dive into that, I want you to describe a time where you really felt loved. Journal about it or talk about it in your groups. Press pause and after you're done, come back and we'll dive a little deeper into, well, what we're really talking about. Sunday, we talked about the tithe. Now, I'm not going to rehash that. I'd love for you to go back and watch that. I, I shared my convictions about tithing, and I would challenge you to really pray about that. What's that look like for you and in your life? And if you've never heard about tithing, um, it literally just means one-tenth, and it was uh, something that uh, in the Old Testament that when you came to God, you were to give the first fruits of your labor. Um, so if you were a farmer, you brought your grain offerings, or you brought, if you were a rancher, you would bring your firstborn of your animals, and you would give them back to God. And so this was something that uh, actually was a part of law, Levitical law. So in the Old Testament, there were all these different laws that you had to follow as a, uh, as a Hebrew, as a child of God. But what's interesting about the tithe is the fact that the tithe started before the law was even put into place. On Sunday, I, I shared from... Uh, the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 14, the first place where we actually see a tenth or a tithe given. And it wasn't out of obligation. It wasn't a part of law. It was Abram who went to war and he uh, got his nephew Lot back. His, his nephew Lot was captured um, in a war between two different nations and he was carried captive. And Abram went in and saved Lot, and on his way out, um, he goes by this town called Salem, and the king of Salem comes out to him. Now, Salem is actually the city of Jerusalem. If you have a study Bible, you'll see that it will say that uh, Salem is the equivalent to the city of Jerusalem. So think about that. The king of Jerusalem comes out, and Abram gives him a tenth of the plunder of the war. Didn't have to, wasn't told to, just wanted to honor this priest. Uh, that's what he was called, the priest of Salem or the king of Salem. And uh, that king of Salem, he didn't get that title from anyone else. We don't know where he came from. We don't know his heritage. We don't know anything about him other than he was the king of Salem, the king of Jerusalem. And so Abram just honors him with a tenth. Melchizedek is mentioned again in Hebrews chapter 7. And it's here where the New Testament writer is making this connection that Jesus is now our high priest. Melchizedek was the high priest of Jerusalem who Abram honored with the tenth. But now Jesus is our high priest and then he connects it to the Levitical law, the fact that the law required that we give a tenth. The law required that we give a sacrifice. And so the Hebrew writer is basically saying that Jesus is greater than both of them, that he fulfilled all of it, and that he was given by God, and that what he accomplished fulfilled all of it, everything. And that's really what I want to talk about is that God wants everything, not a piece, not a portion, not a percentage. He wants all of it. He is our high priest today. So if you follow Christ, God wants your heart. And so many times when we read the New Testament, 
we look at these stories and we think, oh, Jesus is talking about money. He's actually not talking about money most of the time. Sometimes he is, but it really depends on the lens in which you're reading the story. For instance, the parable of the lost coin. Now you could say that story is about money, but really is it? The parable of the lost coin is not about you cleaning your house so that you can find your money. The point is, is that the parable is explaining that we should seek after the kingdom of God and that God seeks us and he won't stop until he finds us. And when he and when we are found, it says that the angels rejoice in heaven. Just like when you find that lost coin because it's a lot of money, you get really excited when you find a $20 bill or a $100 bill or even more than that for for her because that was a that was a lot of money that coin like when you find it man you're going to rejoice you're going to party you're going to want to tell your friends i found that which was lost and that's the point that Jesus is making it's not about money it's about that thing that was lost and now it's found it's so much deeper than just money Jesus isn't asking for a portion. Jesus is actually asking for it all. And that's exactly what Paul says in Romans chapter 12. That now we are to be the living sacrifice. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The point the Hebrew writer was trying to make is the point that I'm trying to make today, that love goes all the way. It's not an amount. It wasn't how much. It was that Jesus wants it all. He doesn't want just a minimum. The law had requirements. Put this amount in for that. And the Hebrew writer said that Jesus fulfilled all of those requirements. What the law could not do, forgive and do away with sin, Jesus did. So I want you to think about this. What does the law require and what does love require? The law says don't murder. But love says don't even become angry with someone. The law said, don't commit adultery. But love, Jesus said, I tell you, don't even look upon a woman with lust. The law said, an eye for an eye. But Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for them. The law said, a lamb had to be given for sin. But love said, a perfect lamb. Jesus gave his life for our sin. Love always requires more. It's not about a percentage or an amount. Can't you see that? It's the fact that Jesus wants all of you. He wants you to be a living sacrifice for him. And that is what his heart longs for. A heart that doesn't stop short. A heart that's all in. And God so loved the world that he said, I'm all in. I won't stop short. I will lay my life down for you. The question is, will we do the same? The cost is high. This isn't what you can get out of it. If you give anything and you expect to get something back, you have given out of the wrong heart. If you give and you want people to 
ooh, and ah, you, you've received your reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Why? Because he wants you to be like that woman. He wants all of you. Your trust, your faith, your love, your full devotion. The question really is, are you all in? Take some time out and go through the study questions that are listed in the description page or in the comment section on Facebook. I want you to really pray about your heart. Do you have a heart that is all in for Jesus? Because he didn't stop short for you. Thanks again for joining us. We'll be back again next week. Oh, my God.